Oh my. All right. Now those clips say more about Ultima Runes of Virtue 2 than I can ever hope to. But I suppose I'll give it a shot because, hey, that is why I'm here. Actually, this is a little awkward. Hang on, let me adjust the microphone so I can talk to you. Look at the lens and talk to you. Let me, let me unchap my lips. Oh man, I just got done playing basketball. I'm sweaty. I didn't shower. I didn't change my clothes. Shows how much I care about Ultima Runes of Virtue too. I'm just going to read off my notes. They're going to be on my lap. I don't care. I don't care, man. <clears throat> so, bringing PC games like Ultima to the Super Nintendo is always a challenge. And a lot of times, companies just aren't up to the challenge. And many PC games simply do not belong on the Super Nintendo. Ultima 6, I do not believe, or at least did not believe when I reviewed it, to be one of those games. It's not like... Uh, we got Doom here. Doom has absolutely no business on the Super Nintendo. This is borderline unplayable. Cool as it is that it exists, as a historical piece, it is not something you would play to have fun today and lots of pc ports ended up like this so origin and fci i don't know if you can see the fci logo right there fci was the company responsible i think they just published them i don't believe they actually did any development themselves but they were the company responsible for porting ultimas 3 4 and 5 to the nes as well as 6 and 7 to the snes they were also responsible for the nes version of hydlide Bringing PC games to console was their specialty. So when I look at Ultima Runes of Virtue 2, a PC game brought to console, but wait, Ix, it's an Ultima game, but it's not a PC game come to console. See, the idea behind Ultima Runes of Virtue 2 on the Super Nintendo in this case, was to build from the ground up an Ultima spin-off series for home consoles. Now they made one on the Game Boy, and then they made another one on the Game Boy. And then the third game in the series, confusingly called Ultima Runes of Virtue 2, came onto the Super Nintendo. Now you've already seen the clips, you've already prejudged this game, and you'd be mostly correct. What you see is what you get. Does, it, does, this, does this look like something you would want to play? No? Well, I don't blame you, but... To dismiss it right there, you would not understand how deep the problems go with this game. If I could use one term to describe Ultima Runes of Virtue 2, it would be annoying. This is an annoying game. And whenever you think that it's done throwing annoying mechanics puzzles and just things that annoy you when you think it's done it just keeps coming it keeps cascading down like a waterfall or a clogged pipe it just keeps coming and coming and coming making this mess this awful mess of a video game and it's like it's like i need a category scale like the terrorist watch list or you know what? Hurricanes. Like the hurricane category 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for hurricanes. That's the kind of system we need to get in to everything wrong with Ultima Runes of Virtue 2. There's, you know, there's little pittances that many games have, and they work their way up into just fundamental, just game-breaking bullshit. And it all just comes together into this. Anyway... Here are some specific examples. I would say that most video games, especially of this era, contain at least a few Category 1 annoyances. I'm talking strange or unusual menus, the lack of fast travel, difficult slow travel, maybe some light 
grinding is required. With Runes of Virtue, it's all of this surface level shit. Why are all of the graphics slanted at such a sharp angle? The perspective is whacked, and often it's tough to tell exactly where objects and scenery begin and end. Also, the sprites, environments, just the graphics in general, the assets themselves, aside from the weird angle, they look fucking horrible. They look terrible. They all have this certain jank that really only exists on cheaply made Super Nintendo games. You ever play, I don't know, Yogi Bear, the Tom and Jerry, the Blues Brothers game on Super Nintendo? I'm not sure I can put this certain aesthetic into words, but Runes of Virtue's assets feel like they belong in a movie licensed cash in game. Not a built from the ground up passion project console RPG. So I'm on the overworld and I notice the set of eyes in a cave. I walk in. Okay, I guess here I am entering the cavern of hatred. Is that supposed to be me? Where's my suit of armor? Why am I in a green bathrobe? And this is supposed to be the cavern of hatred? With brick walls and doors and clearly man-made barrels? I'll give you a hatred, but it doesn't look much like a cavern. Speaking of, who the hell am I actually playing as? In Ultima, the name of the protagonist traditionally, or I guess rather his title, is The Avatar. He's the guy we directly controlled in Ultima 6. Lord British says he will summon the Avatar, but before the game begins, you're able to select one of four characters, none of whom are the actual Avatar. They're your party members, the people who rescue you in the opening of Ultima 6. So these... I guess are avatars in the sense that you play as them, so, you know, that's like the meaning of the word. But none of them are THE avatar, despite everyone in the game addressing you as such, if you follow what I'm saying. Throughout the game, perspective shifts to the Black Knight, who is the main antagonist going around kidnapping mayors. Basically, it works. Whenever you get into a cavern, he then kidnaps another mayor and you need to go get him. And they're all just so strange. They're all the exact same thing. The Black Knight arrives in a town, kidnaps the mayor, then locks him up somewhere. So they're redundant, but they're also just so bizarre. Moving up to category two, it's no longer surface level. These issues are directly hindering your game experience, though perhaps not severe enough to write a game off entirely. Why is my sword slash so small? It's not on the same level as something like Lagoon, for instance, and you do get other ranged weapons fairly easily. But swords, even through the end game, are the most powerful weapons. They do the most damage anyway, so you still need to put up with them sometimes. There's all sorts of hackney shit in the level design, like an over-reliance on fake walls, untelegraphed triggers and switches and whatnot. And there's shit like these slimes that just won't die. Like, I keep hitting them and they just keep multiplying. How am I supposed to get through that room? There's so many fucking slimes. Except you actually kind of can because the hit detection in this game, it almost feels random. Like, I'll run into an enemy and I'm supposed to take damage, but sometimes it's like the game just forgets. Like, here I'm in this room with these rolling rocks and buzz saws. Every time I go through one, I'm supposed to take damage, but sometimes I just don't, and I have no idea why. There's absolutely no direction at all. Your goal is to rescue these eight mayors of Britannia, but nobody tells you where to go, how to accomplish this. You just kind of wander around till you stumble upon another cutscene, which lets you know you're warm. Then you clear out one of the caves, rescue the mayor, get a rune, rinse and repeat until you've gotten all eight. The sound is just horrific. Most of the time, it's just ambient sound effects until suddenly, bam, it'll just start playing this ear-wrenching music at such a high volume. It just, it clashes with the silence so much. It's one thing to have unmemorable, bland, bad music, but when it's actively hurting your ears, it clashes so much with what you would expect to hear. Then you also have this cookie cutter level design, at least through the first six caverns. <laughs> anyway. Oh, we'll get to the last two. Don't worry, we will get to the last two. The dungeons are heavily puzzle based. And a lot of times the game just doesn't telegraph what's going on very well. 
Like take this room where you hit the switch and it fills up with water, but pushing this vase over the floor tiles somehow stops those tiles from filling up with water. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Why does pushing the vase over the tiles stop them from filling up with water? It's just things are so esoteric. And the graphics, the sprites they use, oftentimes don't do a good job of representing what they do. Like, you walk into this room, and touch this giant mushroom, and it's like, okay, well, what did that do? Well, it turns out that's what clears the room of water. Like, why does that make sense? Why does touching a giant mushroom trigger the water to go out of that room? So I'm making my way through the Cavern of Hatred, the first dungeon I come across in the game, and I notice a fake wall. Naturally, I go through the fake wall and see a ladder, and when you see a ladder in a game, your natural instinct is to see where that ladder goes. Oh, back outside! How nice. And yes, when you re-enter, you need to start all the way back from the beginning. This is actually an incredible feature. When you reach the end of a dungeon, having a way back to the start is incredibly helpful. But I wasn't done in there yet. My goal is to get the mayor, and I don't have the mayor. I didn't get him. So while it's a great idea to have a way back to the entrance, how about, I don't know, maybe putting an exit sign, telegraphing in some way that that ladder will lead back outside? Luckily, since this was the first dungeon, it only takes me about 15 minutes to get back to where I was. But still, that's a beginner's trap. How are you supposed to know that? Not the first time. Every time you reach the end of a dungeon, and rescue the mayor, it doesn't just end there. You actually need to escort them out, which normally just means finding the ladder, the up ladder on the floor that you get them on. But be careful because these mayors can die. They have health bars. And if that happens, luckily you're not fucked. You can go back to where you find them the first time to re-rescue them, I suppose. Though most of the time, I don't even risk it. You start with this magic onk that automatically warps you back to Lord British's castle. So... Every time I got a mayor, I just used the item to warp back. Category 3 in this game is malicious shit that you can still pretty easily get past. Some of the level designs are just brain dead, completely heartless. Like take this part for instance. I'm in a room full of lava with this moving platform that you need to stay on, which is simple enough, whatever, just stay on the platform, but then it starts branching off into different directions. It's like, okay, I guess I'll go right. Oh, it branched again? Uh, I guess down? Then whatever, I just keep following the path. Wait a second, is that a couch just sitting in a pool of lava? Why is there a couch sitting in a pool of lava? It's like I get to the end of this path and then it just stops? It just stops? What the fuck kind of pick a pipe nonsense is this? So the main idea of this stage is that you're in a room full of lava and you need to just keep picking the correct path or else it just ends and you die? What the fuck kind of level design is that? It's just pure trial and error. That's awful. All right, well, here's another fantastic idea for a stage. How about we just fill a room with as many treasure chests as possible? Like a hundred treasure chests in the same room. Half of them are gonna be mimics, and only one of them is gonna contain the key to get out. Have fucking fun. And no, you can't shoot the mimics before you run into them. The only way to know is to open them up like any other chest. This is the Mario Maker school of level design. Just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what happens. <laughs> Look at this part. You literally spawn into this area in between two enemies that shoot at you instantly. There is absolutely no way to avoid getting hit. And you just fucking, you take two hits right at the start and there's nothing you can do. What the fuck is this? It's like, why would they do that? In fact, you know what? I think I might even bump this example up to another fucking category. It's time for category four. Now, earlier I mentioned that the first six dungeons are this kind of cookie cutter, who the hell cares, almost feels randomly slapped together nonsense. Well, yeah, that only applies to the first six dungeons. The last two are pure concentrated evil, AKA a category four annoyance. Shit that makes you drop the game almost without fail. 
In order for you to even step foot in the later dungeons, you need to get your hands on a boat, which is easier said than done in Ultima Runes of Virtue 2. It's not like Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest or any other game where story events get you a boat. No, here it is pure happenstance. If pirates happen to see you and they happen to attack you and you have the foresight to run into their ship, kill all of the pirates and steal their boat, then you can get one. It's pure chance. Now, once you actually get a boat, again, it's not like Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest or whatever, where the boat stays with you. Like, if you warp, the boat will also magically teleport with you to wherever you went. No, in this game, boats stay where you leave them. So, say I take a boat from the mainland to a cave in the middle of the ocean, then I get to the end of the dungeon, rescue the mayor, and at this point, you're faced with a very real decision. Do you attempt to try and backtrack out of the dungeon by either finding the up ladder to warp out, which I don't believe exists in every dungeon anyway, or at least I didn't find it in all of them, or you can just use your magic onk and be done with it. Guess what I opted to do? I warped out using the magic onk, which takes you back to Lord British's castle, aka the mainland, meaning that your boat is stuck at the dungeon in the middle of the ocean meaning you need to get another boat. I ended up getting four boats throughout my journey. Sometimes it was incredibly easy. I went on game facts and they list the most consistent way to finding a boat is to just wait outside this city on this peninsula here. Though sometimes the boat would be there right away, but other times I waited over half an hour for a boat to show up. Now you could argue that this is my fault for not simply backtracking out of the dungeon with the mayor, who if you remember is able to die, but I would rather just spend the time waiting for another boat than honestly having to put any more effort into the dungeons than I already was. And of course, once the pirates show up, you better fucking kill all of them because if you die, like you don't get another chance. That's, that's it, you gotta wait for another boat. The game even requires you to at least get two boats because one of them you need to trash to get into a dungeon. So even if you are Mr. Optimal, you still need to wait for this thing at least twice. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes upon the teleportation room, as I like to call it. So here's how it works. You see these arrows, they teleport you. If I step into this arrow into the room that I'm in, it will teleport me three squares up aka onto those other teleporters that you see up there. And if you mess up, you land on the other teleport, which puts you into this room full of lava. Now the teleporter in the room I'm in is constantly moving as well as the one open space in the room above me. My goal is to reach that treasure chest you see over there. Now it seems simple enough. You just need to wait until there's an opening, until wherever your teleporter is and wherever the empty space is line up so you can warp up there and get the treasure chest. But you can wait, wait, wait until the cows come home. And the only opening is this space in the upper right, which allows you to get the burger and the magic potion, but it does not allow you to go over and get the treasure chest, which you need because there's a key in there. And it does appear that there's an opening right here of, let's count it, one, two, three, four frames. Four frames is what you got to sneak your way in there. But I can fucking, I swear to God, I tried this so many goddamn times and it's, it just doesn't work. Like the gap that you think is there is not there. I seriously spent about 40 minutes trying to make this magic happen, but it just would not work. Desperate. I started looking up videos of people playing this game online, which led me to find this long play and they do some like weird trick. Like, look at this. They go into the teleporter, and then they just kind of appear on the square below where you're supposed to appear. It's like, try as I fucking might. I just, I can't, I can't do it. Like, it, 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 like I see the video evidence. There's four frames, apparently, where you can make it. The long play, they fucking, they do it somehow. But I just, I can't. Like, this is, it's, it drives me fucking crazy. There's also some other funny things in the uh, long play, which leads me to believe that it's a tool-assisted long play. They stumble around at first, acting like they have no idea how a room works, only to instantly solve it or do things in an unoptimal manner, in a way that somebody feeling their way through the game for the first time would do it, not somebody who had actually learned the patterns of the stages and had played the game before would actually do it. And this is a perfect example, because you're not actually supposed to do this. You're supposed to fuck around the stage, I have no idea what triggers it, but I was wandering around, I was just walking around, and I came back, and there's a fucking door there. 
I don't know why it's there, but there's a door there. You're supposed to wait for the door to appear and then go in there. You're not supposed to play this stupid teleporting game. Here's a room where all you need to do is run up and hit these switches, which open the next door, which lets you keep going. But you need to wait for these slow, slow as hell rocks to just move out of your way. It's not difficult or anything. It's just time consuming. It's just wasting your time. It's just annoying word of the day. Then you've also got these fucking face things. Fuck any and all puzzles involving these like jumping up and down face guys. They make the most annoying sound effect in the world. The basic idea here is that I need to Zelda Twilight Princess goat farm them into these arrows on the side of the screen. You can hurt them around if you bump into them. Boy howdy does this game lean into fucking bouncing face puzzles late in the game. There's this one stage that's like an escort mission with these things. You start in this central room and you need to round one of them into each of these hallways so these doors open up. But it's like easier fucking said than done. These things just bounce all over the place. Having to wrangle these fucking faces throughout the entire dungeon is like a whole other layer of hell. They hardly fucking go where you want them to go. They just bounce all over the place. It's like trying to control them is like trying to herd cats. I don't Man, here's a room that's oriented like a grid with a whole bunch of teleporters and enemies. So you kill all the enemies and you're just trying to look for a way through the room using the teleporters. The only problem is that there are no up teleporters going beyond a certain point. So you just fucking walk around like a fucking dumbass until you figure out you're supposed to fucking aggro that stupid face thing in the room above you into another room so it can hit a switch so you can break the walls. And then for good measure, there's like a million of those fucking face things at the end, just fucking blocking your path. Actually, I can't even like get mad at that one. That one's genius. How about this next room, where the idea is that these faces fucking push the barrel in your way, and you just gotta try and like push it out of the way, wrangle them into these teleporters so they're not pushing the barrel in your fucking way. Game also plays a nasty trick in this room, because you see this spider web? As soon as I shoot this spider web, these faces are gonna push that barrel all the way to the left, trapping me and making the room unwinnable. But it's like the first time, how am I supposed to know that's what's gonna happen? I shoot the spider web and that's what happens. I go over there and I realize I'm trapped and it's like, fuck man. Nothing in this game is like telegraph. And the sound they make, oh my God. Like annoying is the word of the day. Holy shit. Get a load of this room where it's just a bunch of fake ladders. Haha, ha, that's not it. That's not it. Just keep walking around this room until you find the real one, I guess. This whole game just is Mario Maker on hard. That's what it is. You just get a random assortment of just shit, of just madness thrown into a fucking blender. Some of it comes off as inspired. Like, take this room, for instance. I had a panic attack when I first got here. A sign explaining how the room works before I go into the room? You know it's some convoluted shit when they feel the need to add that. Welcome to the pie factory. First punch in at the time clock, then light the ovens. Get flour from a crate and milk from a barrel. Add the flour first, then the milk. Make a pie in the center of the table, then guide it to the warehouse. It's like, okay, did you get all that? So I guess I gotta mix shit together? Like, how does that even work? This game doesn't have much of, like, an inventory system. I don't... I haven't had to, like, use story items yet. All it really means is that you need to touch this square to light the oven, touch the crate to get the flour, touch the barrel to get the milk, then you make a pie and the, this fucking bonkers music starts playing. And it's a simple conveyor belt puzzle. There's these switches that trigger these arms to push pies onto a separate conveyor belt. So it's just a matter of you mapping out what switches you need to hit in what order to move the pie around. But it's so overwhelming when you first get here, like holy shit. And after you figure it out once, it's the same solution every time. Time. So why does this room make me do it four times? Why do I have to make four pies to leave? This game is such a strange mix of this chaotic, crazy, almost inspired levels mixed with just shit designed to waste your time. It's, again, word of the day, it's so annoying. Here's a room with just one long conveyor belt and a whole bunch of switches. There's one, two, three, four, five, six doors at the end of this. So it's trial and error hitting these switches to see what combination of what opens which door. This room would be annoying if there wasn't a fucking conveyor belt. But when you miss a switch, you have no choice but to just wait until it goes all the way around the room again. You can try and fight it and walk backwards, but that's, again, that's annoying. 
really grinds my gears that the only way to hit these switches is with the ping pong ball. And the ping pong balls bounce off walls, meaning you'll hit a switch and then it'll bounce off the wall and hit the switch again, meaning like you didn't even hit it. It just ends up in the same places where you started. So you really need to angle your shots so you're only hitting the switch one time. So you finally reach the Black Knight and... Despite him yamming it up the whole game of these fucking cutaway cutscenes. He doesn't say anything, he just attacks you. Like any other enemy. No fanfare, not even any music. You just fight the Black Knight. You kill him and... Well, the game doesn't end. I guess you gotta rescue the last person. And what happens next? Constitutes the rare nuclear threat, terrorist level, bright red, category 5 annoyance. The type of shit that makes you want to smash your Super Nintendo. That makes you want to give up video games forever. Luckily, I was streaming live on Discord when this happened. And I have my faithful, true reaction recorded. So I'll play that for you now. I beat the Black Knight. The game should be over. What is this? No! <laughs> what the hell just happened? <laughs> Did that restart it? No signal. <laughs> what, uh... Is there, like, an item that takes you to the beginning? I guess I'll be back on tomorrow. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have to do the whole dungeon all over again. Uh, what? Is there an item that takes you outside? Stop. It wasn't an item. It was that ladder. <laughs> oh, you see it? no. Do you want to break down on what happened? I'll show you the footage. Yeah, please. So let me give you a little breakdown on what happened. I beat the Black Knight. I am elated that I am finally done with this game. And I see the last mayor locked behind two doors. I don't know how to unlock the doors, meaning that I'm not quite done with the game. I need to find a switch or a mushroom or any other sprite that this game uses to open up a door. Then I'll get the mayor, then I'll warp out, then I'll live happily ever after. That's my thought process going into this room. I also notice in the bottom right-hand corner, a fake wall behind a plant. And I think, huh, huh, I bet the switch is behind that fake wall. So I go down there and let's go slowly through this. Notice how when I ran into the plant, the doors disappeared. I did not notice that the doors disappeared. All I saw was in the fake room lies a ladder. Monkey see a ladder, monkey climb the ladder. Back to the world map. Ultima Runes of Virtue 2's final area, the Stygian Abyss is a fucking terror. It is 25 stages of the most annoying shit of this time-consuming, batshit insanity that will put your resolve, that will put your courage, that will make you want to tap out. It's like being in a chokehold for three hours. Yes, three hours. That's how long it takes to get through it. So, yes, I fell for the fucking trick that I fell for in the first dungeon, Again, I warped to the outside and have to redo the entire abyss again. <sighs> I guess because I love you a lot, I hopped back in right after that and did it in about two hours. Honestly, it wasn't nearly as bad the second time through because I had already figured out how to get through each room and that is half the battle anyway. So after all that, let's sit back and enjoy the ending that we have earned. Yes, that really is it. No end credits, no the end, no nothing. You're just left to wander the earth like nothing ever happened. Never trust anyone who needs a haircut. Goodbye. Oh, well imagine as I'm playing the Super Nintendo and I can't help but to notice Know that Runes of Virtue is super annoying What a beautiful cutscene What a beautiful cutscene Everyone is slanted upwards I'm not entirely sure what they're throwing Runes of Virtue is a chore I chime in with a haven't you people ever heard of Putting a goddamn exit sign next to the ladder That warps you out of dungeons 
I chime in with a haven't you people ever heard of? Not spawning you into enemy fire. Much better to face these kinds of things like a nine-year-old playing Mario Maker. Oh, well, in fact, while well, I look at it this way, I mean, technically it's not an RPG. It's closer to Zelda, but may cause I strain. Oh, well, in fact, says the gargoyle to the eep eep. Apparently those face things are called eep eeps. Wait a second, why am I in the crowd? That's me over there. I chime in with a haven't you people ever heard of? Putting a goddamn exit sign next to the ladder that warps you out of dungeons. I chime in with a haven't you people ever heard of? Not spawning you into enemy fire. Much better to face these kinds of things like a nine-year-old playing Mario Maker.